It's about, been about three weeks since Cruise, the GM subsidiary that is developing autonomous vehicle ride hailing in the San Francisco area, was allowed to expand and then had to cut back its service in the San Francisco area. Let's bring in Kyle Vogt, who is the founder and CEO of Cruise. Um, Kyle, thanks for joining us this morning. We wanted to have you on to get some perspective in terms of where things stand right now in terms of Cruise's service in San Francisco. Uh, well, thanks for having me, Phil. It's it's been uh, an exciting year for us, for sure. Some ups and downs, um, but as you know, like cruises out there, this is a brand new thing. Robo taxis on the streets of public roads, and when you drive five mil, almost five million miles, like we have, you're going to see almost everything, including some very rare events. And so, you know, when we see something novel, when our regulators see something novel, they're going to want to take a close look at it. We should all want that. And so, we're working really closely with our regulators to give them the information they need about this and other things. Um, but the really important thing people need to know about AVs is their safety track record, especially relative to human drivers. And since we've been operating, we've seen a two-thirds reduction in the type of collisions that could cause injury. And in the collisions we do see, 92% of them were caused by the human driver and not the AV. And so if you've got a family or kids, you're going to want them in these robo-taxis uh, and not the alternatives. And yet, Kyle, you live out there. You've heard the commentary. The, the head of the San Francisco Fire Department said, you guys are not ready for prime time after one of your vehicles crashed into a fire truck. You've had your vehicles disabled in the middle of intersections. I mean, the public looks at that and they say, these guys are not ready for a widespread expansion across the city. Well, look, we first of all, we love first responders. We work really closely with the fire department, police department and others. Uh, it's really important that you know they're able to do their jobs. Um, that said, I think it's it's really easy for us to get caught up in the excitement and novelty of AVs anytime they do something different than a human driver would. But if we create a double standard or start ignoring the fact that humans are on, on average are actually not very good drivers and causing havoc on our roads, I think we run the risk of getting people hurt. And so, like I said, if you have robo taxis out there that actually has a safety track record that's beating human drivers, and we start talking about pulling them off the road or restricting them, uh, that's where we run the real risk of taking a step backwards in terms of road safety. Kyle, within the last week, you guys announced that you're going to start testing your vehicles in Washington, D.C., also in the Seattle area. You recently expanded into Nashville. Uh, how do you make a decision in terms of what city that you want to start testing out? And, and when do you make the decision, OK, we think that we can go even further than just testing our vehicles in this city? Yeah, so uh, we're, we're in three cities operating commercially now. We're testing in 11 more, and we'll go uh, live commercial service on those um, in the not-too-distant future, and then two international cities. And so this is really the year when you see things going from an interesting pilot in maybe one or two cities into hundreds and then thousands of AVs across several cities operating commercially. And for us, what we're looking for when we go to a new city is we fully expect that the, that AV system is going to work really well, given that we've run commercially in, in several major cities already. But we do an extra round of testing and validation in that new market to make sure not only does the AV perform as expected, but we understand all the, the nuances and know how to interact with that community really well. We want to launch with communities uh, in new cities and not at them. Kyle, one last question here. Uh, CEO of General Motors, Mary Barra, has been effusive in her optimism about what the earnings potential is for Cruise. $50 billion in annual revenue, she believes, by 2030, a billion by, uh, annually by 2025, and yet it's had no impact or very little impact at General Motors. I'm not asking you to answer for General Motors and their shareholders, but what is it going to take to get investors to realize, in your opinion, the potential, the earnings potential of autonomous ride-hailing? Well, I think what you've described there is a sleeper hit. But if you look at what the AV industry, we haven't seen anything like this in, in the tech world or the business world in, in a long time. You've got a product that people absolutely love. When we launch robo taxis in a city, the demand far outstrips supply. People prefer it compared to a ride hail vehicle, like hands down. Um, the technology works. We've proven that it works in you know in a handful of cities, and we've proven that we can scale it quickly to other cities. So you can see the business potential ramping up. And the cost structure is falling through the floor on the operating cost. And as we roll out new generations of vehicles, that means the cost per mile to serve uh, customers in a ride hail robo taxi service um, is dropping. So you have people love it, demand off the charts, cost structure falling through the floor. Um, those are all the ingredients to make a, a slam dunk, in my opinion.